in order to do head tracking pan and tilt on an RC model we need servos to change the angle of the pan and tilt and the problem with that is we need to use these micro servers because our FPV system is already going to be taking up a little bit of weight and we want it to weigh as least as possible. Now if you've got a bigger model then that's fine because you can get larger sail winch servos that have what are called one turn or, or two turn. There is a sail winch servo out there, it is too big for what we need, uh, specifically on the pan axis. So most servos only have 90 degrees of tilt, uh, which is no good for pan and tilt if you want to look out of the side of your model. This servo here, and there's a, a few special servos that do uh, 180 degrees, so Turnergy RS 180, um, that's enough for FPV, but if you want to look behind yourself, then uh, we're a bit stuck, other than this modification which I'm going to show you. So this servo is called the PDI 9180MG. MG stands for Metal Gear and it's a 180 degree servo as it is. But all we need to do is add two resistors. So this is what I've got here. It's off eBay, so very cheap. It is a 2K ohm 1 8 watt resistor. So it's really small. You can use bigger ones but uh, any uh, larger than 1 8 watt and you might struggle to fit it in there but the, the 2k ohm is the important value and uh, this sounds and looks much more scary than it is but it's dead easy. You can get this servo off Banggood really cheap. I'm um, gonna take a screwdriver and we are just going to undo the screws underneath uh, be careful here that the top part uh, doesn't come loose. Uh, we just want to get in the bottom part. Okay, that's all of those screws undone, so we're just going to lift this up out of place here, and we can put that to one side. So those screws do go all the way through to this top part here. Um, but we're not really looking to take the top part off. You see this green thing here. This is the potentiometer. And on the black wire and the white wire, that is where we're going to add one of these resistors. You just have to be able to get this out. And sometimes it's a little bit difficult because... Ah, oh, there we go. It's clipped in from the other side. So you can push it from the other side, but I wouldn't recommend doing that because then, you know, all of the cogs come loose. So, I'm just going to, with a soldering iron, desolder the black and uh, desolder the white. These are not silicon wires, so be careful because they will burn easily. So, those two come off like so. We're then going to take one of these resistors and I'm just going to cut short with a pair of cutters one end and leave the other end a little bit longer. That's just so uh, it's going to be easier to solder and attach to. So first job is to tin up this side. You might want to use some uh, blue tack. I don't have any to hand. Then I'm going to solder this onto this little tab. You have to be uh, very careful because it's plastic uh, so we don't want to melt the potentiometer, but I want a good solder join. So now I can cut this one. And we're going to tin it up. Okay, so I'm going to do that for the other side. It's much easier to do a neater soldering job when you haven't got a camera in front of your face. Uh, but there's your two resistors and then bend them back. And that's it. Uh, a little bit fiddly, but uh, other than that, it's uh, pretty straightforward. So this now has to go 
back in here. You could put some heat shrink on there if you like to stop things catching, but uh, I haven't found that to be a problem. Uh, it does clip in to the potentiometer in the center, so you might just have to get a screwdriver in there. Yeah, and you might feel like a clunk as it goes in. There we go. Uh, I think that is in. Let's just check. So we're looking for the metal pin in the middle. Uh, let's see if I can bend these down even more. We don't want anything to short. Uh, it should be okay because we've got these wires that sort of sit in the way there. So yeah, the, the actual controller board isn't going to get in the way. Okay, there we go. Uh, a lot of that box on the top sits in the bottom of the servo anyways. So uh, just to tighten these uh, screws up. So if I now take this servo head and just place it loosely on the top. This is the problem with servos. You can't get them exactly upright. But there we go. Yeah, you've got these splines so you can't direct them exactly but uh, I'm going to take the servo tester you don't need a servo tester uh, but if I stick it in auto that's going to show the the full swing of the movement that we've now got you can see that it's it's not 360 degrees but it's almost there and then if I stick it in uh, manual mode You'll see that as I twist this here, we've got all that movement. But what will happen is as I get to the edge of here, it will go all the way around. You see that? So we need to set the maximum PWM values in OpenTX, but that's fine. Then here you can see we've got different weights. That one is at 84 percent resolution out there so yeah we end up with about 300 to 270 degrees of movement it's ready to go on your pan tilt system